Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today, folks, you might have seen my video a few weeks ago that I made with this guitar here. This is my Nathan Shepard NSG-1, because for a long time I'd been on the lookout for a guitar made here in the UK, because all of my guitars were made overseas, most in America, a couple in Japan, one in Korea, but I didn't own a guitar that was built here in the UK. So I was on the search, it eventually narrowed down to this, I was able to grab it, and I'm very happy with it. Now, I had an eBay search saved on my phone for UK made guitars. And not long after I bought that, another guitar cropped up that really piqued my interest. So I did my due diligence on it. I emailed the person who had built it to find out more about it and eventually put in a very low ball offer for it on eBay and managed to win it. So this is the guitar here. Now I have made some changes to this already. So this isn't exactly as it came stock, but this is a model of guitar known as the Curve Special made by a luthier based in Scotland called Mark Bailey. Now, just as an interesting aside here, Mark Bailey trained Nathan Shepard in how to build guitars. So in terms of luthier lineage, this guitar is this guitar's dad. So only a saddo like me would really care about that, but it's an interesting link between the two nonetheless. Now, Mark's guitars come in two tiers, really. Three if you include fully customizing an instrument. But the first tier is the standard tier. So it's kind of plain materials, workhorse instruments, I suppose. Very affordable for a small workshop luthier made guitar, but kind of, you know, the bottom rung of the ladder in that sense. But the top rung is the special tier, which is what this is. Now, the models are basically the same. They're just made with much fancier materials and top quality gear. So the body of this guitar is a solid piece of flamed maple. Now, that's kind of unusual because maple isn't used usually as a body would. Neck, fretboard, absolutely, but not really a body. And the neck is made of a mahogany laminate. So in terms of wood choice, it's kind of backwards from what you might expect. Now, I've never owned a solid maple guitar before because not many people build them. And from everything I've read online, most people say the reason it's not commonly used is it is so bright, like unusably bright. Now, I like bright sounding guitars with lots of clarity, but as a small spoiler, this guitar is not over bright whatsoever. It sounds phenomenal. Now, as I said, I have changed a few things about it. I gave it some new electronics. So I used the VI pots, which are the 550K Central Lab replicas, 50s wiring, switchcraft switch and jacks, and a nice Lux capacitor. So kind of the basic upgrades that I would do to bring the electronics fully up to spec. But I also wanted to change the pickups. Now, the original pickups this guitar had in were an open black set made by a company called Wilkinson. Now, they're not known for being the best pickups in the world. They run about 30 pounds a set. And the other thing I didn't like about them is they were so mismatched in terms of their output. Now it's an actual set that Wilkinson make, and I don't know why they paired them together, because the neck humbucker was about 7K. So really low in terms of DC resistance for even like a vintage style PAF. The bridge pickup was about 14K, and there is no amount of height adjustment that could balance that out and tonally work and match the outputs. The bridge was just barking all the time and the neck was super quiet and muddy wasn't working for me at all. So I did try and find a set of hand wound pickups made in Scotland to pair with this Scottish made guitar. I'm a quarter Scottish as well, so that would kind of work for me. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are no winders of pickups based in Scotland. If you know any different, please do let me know. I did try to find one, but just couldn't find one anywhere. So in the end, I put these pickups in here, which are the Wiz Premium Clone PAFs. Now those are actually made over in Croatia, but I did buy these from a very nice chap called Bob based in Scotland. So a very tenuous link there as well. Now. These did come with silver covers, which I did try originally, but even before getting into how they sounded, they just didn't look right in this instrument. So I popped the covers off, and I have to say, I absolutely love the open whites in this guitar. They just make the whole guitar pop. I think it looks absolutely stunning with the open white pickups, but they're very, very good 
PAF replicas. They're in the same bracket as Throwback and Monty's No X4, like really premium quality stuff. And I've been playing around with the magnets in here as well, which isn't something I usually do, but I'm getting more into nowadays. So the bridge pickup currently has an Alnico 2 magnet and the neck has an Alnico 5. Now I am going to experiment a little bit further with especially the neck pickup and the magnet choice because it's a little bit over thick and lacking in clarity at the moment, to my ears at least. So I reckon an Alnico 3 magnet in there will be just the ticket. So I'm going to experiment with that soon. I might make a video about PAF magnets. We'll see on that. But I'm loving how this guitar sounds, especially with the open coil pickups. It's not over bright at all. It has a lovely sizzle to it, but it's not ear piercing. It's a really thick sounding instrument, if anything. And that bridge pickup especially is just absolutely amazing. So today I'm just going to plug it into my Orange Retro 50 head, which is probably my favourite UK made guitar amp I own, and just play a few things through it. No pedals or anything, just show you the basic sound of this instrument. There are a few other things I need to do to it. I need to lower the action slightly, but I don't have the correct Allen key size because it's all import metric stuff and I don't have one that works. So I'll have to take the strings off, but because I use round core strings, if I took them off, the um, winding would slip and I have to put a new set of strings on and I only put these on yesterday, so I don't want to waste them just yet. I think the nut's going to need a little bit of cutting to accommodate my 12 to 64s. All kind of basic stuff. There's a little bit more to do on this, but as it is, it's sounding astonishingly good. So I'm going to plug it in today and just play a few things to show you how it sounds. Now, as one slight aside, um, I've managed to screw my knee up and you might not be able to see, I've got a whacking great knee brace on, which makes it really awkward for sitting a guitar on my lap. So I'm forever like sort of pulling and pushing at the neck and bending it slightly in out of tune and hunched over the thing like Gollum. So if I look a bit uncomfortable today and I'm bending it in and out of tune a little bit, sorry, it really can't be helped and it's probably going to continue for the next few weeks at least. So apologies for that in advance, but um, I'm doing the best with what I've got available. So without further ado, folks, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there we are, folks. Now, please do comment underneath. Let me know what you thought of this guitar today. I love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks down in the comment section. But I've got to say, I'm loving everything about this instrument at the moment. I love how it looks. I now love how it sounds. It's super comfortable to play. It's got quite a thin 60s style neck on it, which just fits under the fingers beautifully. There's not a huge amount of relief in the fretboard, so it's pretty flat, very easy to play, but with no buzzers anywhere. It's just an immaculately made guitar. And with the electronics upgrades, especially the pickups, it now sounds as good as it looks, I think. But as a slight aside on small workshop luthier made guitars, that I think it is important to point out, these sorts of instruments don't hold their value particularly well on the second hand market. Now this would have cost the original owner nearly £2,000, which I think is a pretty fair price for a luthier made handcrafted instrument with really nice materials. But I won the eBay auction for less than a quarter of that. So if you're going to go to a small workshop luthier and get your guitar made, it really needs to be your dream instrument you're going to play for the rest of your life. It's not the sort of thing you want to buy and maybe punt out in the future if you don't like it, because you could lose quite a lot of money. But that said, if you're looking for a second-hand bargain, this is probably the best value for money I've ever spent on a guitar in my life. It's a handcrafted premium quality instrument for like Mexican Fender money. So the bargains are out there if you go looking for them. But as I said, folks, please do let me know your thoughts and opinions underneath. I love hearing from you folks. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching. Please do click subscribe. I know I always say it, but it makes a huge difference when you do that. You're going to be seeing this guitar a lot more on the channel going forward because, as I said, I just love everything about it now. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.